Hello, thank you for tuning into our video. My name is Tegan Whalen and today we're going to be looking at how to teach a distance drop by using, using the food placement method. Now we've got two videos here with our demonstrator Myrtle, the Border Terrier. This is Myrtle's first training sessions in distance drop and what I'm trying to do here is teach, is teach her that when she gets told drop she gets given food but she gets given food in the location where I said drop. So you'll hear me saying drop and then when she does uh, I say yes and I throw the food to where she was. Now because she hasn't done this before she's coming closer to me because she's got a history of being rewarded close to me. What I'm doing though is making the rewards further away from me and dogs will naturally migrate to where their food rewards are occurring. So in this case the food rewards are occurring where she's dropping and so she makes a decision over time to drop further and further away from me. As we go through, you'll also see that I reward faster responses and responses further away from me with more vigour. So we're also in, in some ways shaping her response. Bye. Now in just one moment you'll see Myrtle run towards me, I ask her to drop and she drops soon after. It's not precise but you get to see the beginnings of a drop on recall here. Myrtle heard drop and she at least hesitated as she was coming towards me and then chose to drop at a closer distance. So this method not only teaches the dog to drop at a distance but also teaches the dog to drop on recall as well. Drop. Okay, so we're just entering a section where Myrtle spends a lot of time not interacting with me. Now, that's because I also teach my dogs to find a bait on the ground, and that's what Myrtle does for quite a long period. Now, the reason um, that I do that is because I do tracking with my dogs, so I never discourage sniffing behaviour, and you've probably heard me say a few times during this clip to, for Myrtle to find. Uh, and when I'm doing that, I'm encouraging her to keep searching like this. Um, it doesn't seem to be overly detrimental to the process, and I just let her do it. And when she's ready to re-engage, she will. Um, I'm sure at some point she'll realise that it's better odds to just start paying attention to me and keep going, like she just did there. So she re-engages soon enough. It's just she has these periods where she looks for the food that might be on the ground, and she's a little bit OCD about it. This will calm down, and it's not a problem for this process.
Now in a moment Myrtle's about to bark at me after performing a drop. So if you just watch for a moment I ask her to drop and though she does it, there was a bark involved. Now this is probably because she's a little bit frustrated because she's lost a few treats under the roller door and she's kind of saying why isn't this paying me anymore. I also think she's a bit conflicted so I call her towards me just to give her some love and attention next to me as an attempt to try to reduce her conflict. Now another thing you'll see in a moment is Myrtle, I think as a result of that kind of love and attention, decides to come a bit close to me and I take that opportunity to also ask for a sit. So what we're doing here is teaching her to do other behaviours so it's not always drop. Now I chose to do a sit there because I thought it was pretty good odds that she would sit because I'm close to her and she's used to sitting close to me. Now in a moment I'm going to ask her to sit at a distance and you see She chose not to because she didn't understand. She's not used to sitting further away from me, let alone from a drop position. So what I did is I reduced the distance and improved Myrtle's understanding of sit at a distance. And because of that, she chose to sit and we continued. Now, that means this is a method for also slowly introducing other behaviours as well. So we want to teach drop, pretty good and rock solid. But we don't want to make it so solid that she defaults to drop all the time. So I'm starting to switch it up because Myrtle's understanding is improving. I just want to make it that little bit more challenging for her while also making it better for us in the long run of having a range of varieties of the distance and not just drop. Drop. That was very close. Drop. Yes, good girl. Hindsight is a wonderful thing and on reviewing this video I realised I should have stopped about now. If you look at Myrtle when she comes in towards the camera you can see that she's panting and it's clear that she's getting tired. She starts circling and looking for food a little bit more lethargically and she's just not quite up to it. So in hindsight I really should have ended the session here. I don't think it actually hurt her to keep going but I don't think I was getting the best out of it. I think she's learned all that she could really learn in this session. And you'll see me actually in a moment come in and try to help her figure out where the food is. So um, she's a bit past it right now, but we continue on and I'll conclude the rest of the video for um, entirety's sake. But I think I should have left the session here. Sit. 
drop. Let it drop. Yes. Drop. Yes. Drop. Yes, good girl. Drop. Yes, good girl. Drop. We've almost reached Drop. the end of the first training session with Myrtle, and you're about to almost enter the second video. Now, believe it or not, that second video occurred nine months after this one, and we didn't do a single training session in between these two. No formal sessions. We do ask for drop around the house every now and then, but most of the time, never at a distance. Most of the time, it's just in close proximity. So we decided to have another session and film it again. You'll see that Myrtle is a lot older, and Myrtle's ear has fixed itself, thankfully. And unfortunately, I didn't have the hindsight of putting the camera on a tripod this time, so excuse me if you get dizzy. You can see that Myrtle already knows to drop at a distance now. So this is nine months of latency, but it does mean that Myrtle's yes. remembered an awful lot from just a 10 minute session or whatever it was that we had yes. before. So you can see Myrtle's dropping consistently at a distance. She's doing it reasonably fast and she knows what it's about too. You can see that she's got the switch on. She knows exactly what I'm wanting from her and She's also a little bit better with the nose now, finding treats. This is a boo-boo on my heart. I think I dropped a treat right near my feet by accident. Yes, now just continue to watch and see how much Myrtle has improved with no training Drop. over nine months. Yes. Drop. Yes. Did you lose it? Drop. Yes. Yes, good girl. Drop. Yes, good girl. Drop. Yes. Drop. Yes. Drop. After the Dunbar sessions I attended okay. last year, I've started introducing somewhat of the positive verbal punishment that he was meaning where you repeatedly cure a dog if it does incorrect behaviour. So in a moment you're going to ask, see me ask Myrtle to drop twice because she doesn't do it on the first drop. So I rewarded that second one because her elbows did touch the ground that little bit. Now in a second you also see Myrtle anticipate a, a drop. Now, I don't want her anticipating drops, so that's not what this is about. So you see that I also cued her to sit afterwards. So as she's thinking, oh, I know what you're going to ask, a drop, I'm thinking, well, you're wrong, you're actually needing to sit this time. So I'm trying to catch her out so that she learns that it's not always drop, it's what I'm saying. This is another moment where she chose, uh, she was confused about what I wanted and chose to um, stay dropped. Uh, at a distance when I cue to sit. So again, I reduced the distance, yes. she increased her understanding and she chose to sit. Drop. Yes. Sit. Yes, good girl. Sit. Yes, good girl. Sit. Yes. That's a boo-boo of a one. Stand. Matty, stand. Drop. That's another boo-boo one. Drop. Sit. Drop. Yes, good girl.
Yes, good girl. Sit. Yes. Sit. 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 Yes. So Nurse has been doing so well at dropping at a distance that yes, this has girl. pretty much become a video about teaching anything else at, else at a distance as well. So you can see that I'm curing her to do multiple behaviours at a distance and sometimes I have to decrease the distance to improve her understanding but she's getting the hang of things slowly. She's always choosing to do things away from me. She's not coming close to me to perform behaviours anymore which is, you know, a good start. Well, we've just about reached the end of this training session in this video but thank you so much for watching. I really look forward to hearing your comments and I'll make sure that I post in this description a little uh, link to where you can read about this method as well. So thank you very much. This is Tegan from Some Thoughts About Dogs and I hope you read our blog very shortly.